Hey guys, welcome to part 7. This is a thermal base, that remote base that Brevin was talking about a while ago. We're here to rescue Torque, and this is where the game starts to get kind of tough, at least in terms of the enemies. You're gonna see a lot of those Brevin troopers from now on, and just a whole bunch of other things that can work together to drain your health in no time flat. So, you know, y y just be careful. Don't feel compelled to fight every single enemy you come across, because more likely than not, you'll end up dead. So, just do what you need to, and move on, because these guys can off you before you know it. Anyway, I like this stage because it manages to be both a water level and a fire level at the same time. It mixes up a lot of tropes you'd expect to see from each in like various ways and it just really mixes things up, you know? It's not my favorite stage, like it's, it's not the most fun, but I can appreciate its creativity. I can appreciate the amount of thought that went into you know, handling all these gimmicks. Anyway, this is one of the more annoying gimmicks of this stage. Uh, you have to use these green key cards to make it through a lot of these doors. And you might think, oh, hold on. Intrusion detected. Please remove yourself from the facility. I really like that effect. Those eyes are so cool. Anyway, I know you're probably thinking, you might be thinking, oh, so it's like those treasure hunting sections from SA2, they're super annoying because you just don't know where to go, and it takes a long time, and it's like, no, it's not really like that at all. Aside from a few areas like that up there where we just were to get that card, there isn't much exploration in this stage at all. It's very linear, it's just in a roundabout way that you wouldn't expect. It's like, how do I ex explain this? Um, okay, like we couldn't go through that door before, so we're going to this area. And as you can see, there's nowhere left to go except to that, that key card over there. Well, as soon as we get that key card, we have to backtrack to that area where we got stuck before. So you know, it's like, oh, you can't go through door A? Okay, then try going through door B, and then come back to go through door A. You can't go into this room? Okay, go into that room first, and then come back here. So it's not like there's multiple paths to the stage, you know, it's not like you can really find your way around, it's it's like the stage funnels you into certain areas. There is a very specific set path, it's just that there are a lot of detours that you're kind of forced to go through. By the way, I think it's really, really neat that they had a spike shield up there, like with this section in mind. It's just a great way to reward whatever exploration there is to do. Like, oh, thanks for getting that card up there. Here, have a spike shield. It'll make the next section a lot easier. So, you know, there are still some bits like that throughout the stage that I really appreciate. It's just, I, I think that the whole keycard gimmick was implemented pretty poorly. I mean, I, I can't really think of a much better way. Well, okay, I can think of one good way to go about it. Let's say instead of having a set number of these that you need to find, like, every single one and look in every nook and cranny to find just to get to the end of the stage, let's say you only needed, like, five of them, but in actuality, there were 10 or 15 throughout the stage. You know, then there'd be exploration, but it wouldn't be so forced. You, you wouldn't feel inhibited by it. But then the stage would probably end up being freaking huge and confusing and make the actual collectibles really hard to find. And I just don't care for this gimmick much. You know, I, I just think it's kind of weird, and it's really hard to find a right way to go about it. Given what Strife had to work with, I think he did an okay job. I just hope that if he ever revisit, revisits this idea and makes a stage like this in whatever game comes next, I hope he finds an exciting new new way to go about it, like what I described. Anyway, enough about that. I don't want to harp on that. This room is really cool. I'm sure everyone who saw this in the trailers wanted to find it. There's so many goodies, you're bound to get an extra life just from getting all the gems. By the way, I've noticed that some of the enemies are able to grab the gems. I think it's neat that they're able to interact with the environment that way. They can hurt themselves, they can hurt each other, and they can even grab the items before you can get to them. You know, it's just... It's interesting. It's a little annoying, but it makes the world feel more real. Anyway, I do think this is a good stage in terms of escalation. Like, they, they keep reusing the same gimmicks over and over again throughout the stage, but they keep finding increasingly precarious ways to use them. Like, there's always some craftier new spin that they throw at you. And, you know, I think it's good in terms of that. You know, I do think it's really well designed in that way. I don't think it's a bad level, I just think that some of the gimmicks are kind of weird. But yeah, it's like the level just keeps growing and getting more intense as it goes on, and... I do think that's pretty cool. I do like it for that. Oh, this section annoys me. I just, there's two security doors over there. The keys are right here. It's super easy. It's... It, I just don't really see the point of it. It just kind of slows the level down, but, but not even much, and I just... I'm not saying this stripe should change this level or whatever. I hate that people have been telling you to change certain parts of it because it's too hard or whatever. It's just that whole gimmick kind of confuses me. To unlock this door, stand up a little to your right. Okay, if you say so. 
Just Again, it's just that, that whole gimmick just kind of perplexes me, that's all. Hey, we're coming up to a sub-boss that I really like. In fact, it's one of my favorite sub-bosses just because I like the whole idea of it. It's not that hard or anything, it only really has one attack you'd think it would be really dull, but what I like about it is like, you don't even have to kill it. It's, it's not some obstacle, it's just there. Like look, once you hit it enough times, you get the key and you can just leave like that. You don't have to fight it, but you can keep fighting it if you wanna, you know, if you think you're up to it. And I just like, it's like, oh, you, you don't have to fight it if you don't want to, but if you do, you get all these goodies! And I just really like stuff like that that rewards the player for going the extra mile. It's, it's really organic. It's just another one of those things that makes this world feel flexible and real. And geez, just to see how hard I hit that guy. <laughs> anyway. There's not much more of this stage to go. We're coming up right to the end of it. I do think it's a pretty good stage. I like the visuals, I like the music, and I do like most of these gimmicks. It's just some of them like the card keys. I I'm just glad they don't reuse those in another stage. Oh boy. <laughs> I thought I could outrun those guys. I thought I could ditch them up there, that they wouldn't be able to follow me down here, and they did. I managed to take one of them out, but I'm still struggling with this other guy. I can't focus on him and the syntax at the same time, and I <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's pretty pathetic. Like Alright, this is Syntax. She's both a mid-boss and end-boss of this stage. Uh, rather not Syntax herself, Syntax is just a, just a computer program, and this is one of several bodies that she uses to attack you as the game goes on. But just wait until you see some of the crazy things she whips up later. So yeah, this, this boss can uh, take a long time. It's, it is one of the more tedious bosses of the game. You just have to be really careful. I got through it pretty quickly, but uh, it's just because I was being an idiot and I got myself hurt a lot. I was just kind of bum-rushing it. This part doesn't take much damage at all. It's, it's just a, it's a very quick phase. You're just there to add a little extra challenge. And there you go. Mm. What a rush. Well, on to the second half of the stage. Uh, uh, oh, oh, what? Looks like it's payback time! Let him go! Or else what? Remember what happened the last time you messed with a dragon? Let him go! <laughs> Good girl! I want you to be nice and angry for this! <laughs> Oh! Before you decided to throw your life away and interfere with our mission, you should have asked yourself one very important question. What makes you so special? She actually went through with it? Big surprise. Are you mad at her? Eh, I'll get over it, I guess. But we're gonna do things my way now. What is this place? The Red Scarves are down here. They've still got all my ninja stuff. You are a ninja? Eh, not really. I mean, it's a long story, so I'll tell you someday if you're good. Come on, let's show Miss Hero Pants how it's done. Hey guys, and welcome to part 7. This is the thermal... Huh. Yeah, we're doing things a little differently in this particular LP. So, Carol's here to get back in touch with some of her old ninja buddies from back in the day, and Milis just started tagging along. When I got to this point in Carol's story, I assumed this was a character exclusive stage made just for her because, hey, Mila gets Aqua Tunnel, and as we'll see in a little while, Alec gets a stage all to herself too. So, I was really surprised when I got to this point in Mila's campaign, and I, I found out that this stage is actually much easier to play through with her, because she can cheese her way past most of these lasers with the blocks and the shields and whatnot, which do work most of the time. And she can reach a lot of areas that are really hard to get to as Carol, just by using her flutter jump, you know, like that. And I just think it's kind of a shame, because 
Like, the other characters get their own special stages, but Carol doesn't get a stage where she really shines as the best character to play as, where she comes in the most handy. Like, yeah, there's a few little areas here and there where her abilities are pretty useful, but overall, it's still much easier to get through this stage with a character like Mila. In fact, there's one area that we'll, we'll, we'll get to in the next video that is made, like, specifically with Mila in mind. Anytime I try to get through it with Carol, I just get myself hurt. And again, I just think it's kind of a shame. I think this probably was a Carol exclusive stage at one point, or at least it was intended to be, but it still wound up being much easier to play through with Mila. And again, it's, it's just a crying shame. I'm not gonna harp on it too much, but I just think it's kind of a missed opportunity. Anyway, we're coming right up to a sub boss, and this guy is just, it's like a game of rock, paper, scissors. It's gonna be over really quickly, and it could just as easily go either way. Uh, yeah. So anyway, you're probably wondering why I'm playing through these stages in this order. Why I cut halfway through Thermal Base to come here. Well, I'm trying to play all these stages in what I feel is the closest thing to a, a chronological order, you know? Uh, like, one of the biggest inspirations for this LP was Clement's Sonic Adventure 2 LP. It's my favorite LP of that game on this entire site because it's like he tackles all of the story in a very specific order, and it plays out really well because of that. And you know, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to include all the bits of the story that I can, and try to play them in a certain order so, you know, it's easy to follow and nothing is really missed. Because you're not going to see everything from Lilac's point of view or even Carol's. Not everything is going to make perfect sense. So, you know, I want this to be THE LP that people come to to find out about Freedom Planet. I know that's a really pompous sort of thing to say, and I know I'm not really getting that many views with these videos, so, you know, but I am trying to make this a cut above most of the, the day one LPs, you know? I am trying to make this something special, and, well, if, if it does, if you're getting a kick out of it, great. Anyway, this, uh, I honestly think this stage is a little bland. There's just a lot of brown, a lot of gray and purple and whatnot, and it's okay, you know, it's a perfectly serviceable stage. There are a lot of things in it that I really like, like the music, for example, and those, um, those soccer trees and whatnot, yeah. I remember seeing those in the forums and wondering what Strife was going to do with them, and he wound up putting them in here, fancy that. One thing I do like about this stage is that, it, like Thermal Base, it's, it's a stage that escalates as it goes on. Because it starts out, like, on a really small scale, but the further you go, it just gets crazier, and it gets more open and, and more complex, and just more intense. By the way, you see how much easier this is with Mila? Uh, again, uh, just uh, kind of a missed opportunity. Uh, I really hope that they do make another stage for Carol at some point, or that when they make a sequel to this game, you know, that, that, that she's just a little more fun to play as, even without the motorcycle. So yeah, there's not much of this video left to go. Uh, there's some I wanted to touch upon, but I'll save it for the next video, because we're not going through this entire stage in this one. I was showing the, like the first half of Thermal Base and Trap Hideout, and you'll see other stages end in the next video. I know it's a really roundabout way to do things, but, well, that's just the way I felt they should play out. I do think this section right here is very well designed. It's probably the best part of the whole level, because there are parts of it that are made for Mila, and parts that are quite obviously made for Carol. You know, like, like, Carol can climb up the walls, she can use those jump pads to get around. This card right here, you're supposed to get as Carol, because she can slide down the wall without hitting those spikes. And then she can jump on the side of that log, and just keep going up. So, you know, I just wish the entire level was like that, because it feels really unbalanced in some ways. Though the second half is a little better. Anyway, this is the most tedious boss in the entire game. It just has, like, two attacks, and, you know, that's fine, that's all it really needs. But, I guess what makes it tedious is that you can't attack it much. It's a little faster with Mila, just because her blocks do more damage than Carol's swipes. But if you're playing as Carol, oh my goodness, this, this fight takes so long! Because you, you can't just hit it at any time. Even when it's retracting, it's, it's, it's you know, whatever those are. It's like, even then, as they're moving back into place, there's still like an extra second where they can hurt you. And as you can see, I, I call it there, it wasn't too hard. But anyway, yeah. See you in part 8, guys.